Broadway, street of a million lights. At the center of New York, Times Square, blazing with neon signs. Playtime, theater time along the Great White Way. Clustered at the heart of the city are the playhouses. Here are the lavish productions, the famous stars, the successful plays that sometimes run for several years. Here are the large and cosmopolitan audiences that support them. But the theaters of the cities are only a part of the American scene. In the small towns, in the centers of rural life over the country, there is another sort of theater. These are the summer playhouses and the community theaters. Here there are no large audiences, no expensive productions. But in converted barns and boathouses, or any available building, the drama comes from the people to the people. There is also the repertory company. Hedgerow Theater in Pennsylvania is one of these. It is the only theater in the United States where plays have been presented in repertory continuously for more than a quarter of a century. To these players, the life of the stage is the only life worth leading. Their theater is small, their productions cannot compare with Broadway's, and none of the actors are stars. But they have found a way to afford themselves a chance to act, not just in one role, but in many. Over the years, they have acquired a steady audience, not large, but adequate to their needs and they have earned for themselves a place of prestige in the community. In a farmhouse on the hill overlooking their theater, the Hedgerow players live and work together. There are 25 resident members who gather at the breakfast table each morning. Thirteen of them are making this theater the career of their lives. They form a partnership which owns the properties and conducts the business, and assures the enterprise a continuing life. This is a place where everyone is a worker as well as an actor. 
the household tasks are shared alike by all. The man who played the leading role in last night's performance works in the pantry today. receive the same compensation, a little spending money, room and board, and the clothing needed for their jobs. big days in the community is the annual election day. By the vote of the members, eight plays are to be selected for the new season's repertoire. The changing list of plays gives all of them a wider choice of acting opportunities. They do the plays they want to do, and they repeat most frequently those with the widest appeal. Most of the plays are popular favorites of years gone by, the classics of the theater. Some are new plays, never before tried on any stage. The votes are counted, the results announced and a new season gets underway. Production work begins with the stage itself. The sets must be assembled first. The players who will use the stage must do the work of preparation. today may handle props tomorrow. He goes in turn from job to job, sharing the work, learning every phase of stagecraft. production. In the sense, the actresses, 
dressmakers now make the costumes for their plays. It is a never-ending process, for the company is always working on several different plays at once. Many hours are spent experimenting with makeup. The business of the theater often takes the players into nearby Philadelphia. Here, the Declaration of Independence was signed. The city is rich in the history of the American people, and the bookstores are a part of its traditions. This bookseller is an old friend of the theater, and is often helpful in their research work. Today, a book on French costumes is needed. This actress, who needs to give more realism to the part she plays, comes to the city to find it. She watches the people. She observes their motions, gestures, their way of doing things. One of the actors requires an old type pistol. In this gun shop, which is over a hundred years old, he seeks the prop he needs. The theater has a publicity office where the players take their turns in mailing tickets, distributing programs, and doing the office work necessary to the business. In the evening, as performance time draws near, the dining room is quiet.
Presently, the actors go down the hill to the theater. By all modes of transportation, the audience arrives. In the course of a year, automobiles from nearly all of the 48 states will come here, and some from Canada and Mexico. Backstage, the players await their call. All of the work, all of the preparations, lead to this ever-recurring moment, curtain time. I have been thinking what it's meant to us, having a family like yours next place to all these years. You see, I never went to school. I don't know why you say that, Silas. There was two winters you went to school. Yes, Mother, I did. And I'm glad I did. But I mean school the way Mr. Favreys went to school. He's went to universities in his own country and other countries, too. All the wisest and finest things men have found out all they've thought since first they've begun to think was uh, put before him. Wherever a stage is brought to life, wherever an audience gathers, there the theater lives. Here in this repertory company, the heritage of many countries and of many ages intrudes upon the modern world. Thank you.